Welcome to Confident AF Live, taking your mindset next level to get next year's results today with me, your host, Brandon Foster. Are you a badass peep with big dreams, ready to turn your unrealistic goals into reality? Confident AF Live is the gateway to enormous new opportunities and unlimited possibilities. The unrealistic can suddenly become realistic for you if you believe it. Are you ready to take your dreams and results to the next level? Then stay tuned as we help crack open the door to new ways of impactful thinking and believing about yourself with mindset practices for badass people like you. Confident AF Live starts right now. What up, badasses? Super excited for another Confident AF episode. If this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. My name is Brandon. I'm a next level mindset expert and confidence coach who helps badasses deliberately and systematically scale their confidence, their co-creative faith, and their mindset so they can systematically and deliberately grow and scale their business Is there anything better than that, honestly? Because your business is a gift for you to give the world. The more that you understand and are free to give or gift to the world, the more money you can make, the more you can help other people. It's just this amazing, incredible snowball effect. So welcome if this is your first time. If you've listened to many episodes before, welcome. So glad that you are back. Remember, the best thing you do for me is to get more people to listen to this podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Brandon R. Foster and check out my YouTube channel at Brandon R. Foster Coaching as well. Today, I'm really excited about today's episode because I have lost track how many times I have talked about the story of David and Goliath in one-on-one coaching with my clients and in my masterminds and in my programs. So many times have I talked about this story. And if you are not faith-based, boo, you're good, you're safe. There's gonna be so many golden nuggets for you anyway in this story. You can just think about it like a parable if you want to, if that's gonna make you feel more comfortable, all right? So no judgment here on no matter where you are, but I have to talk about this. I had to do a podcast episode on this. I've been wanting to do a podcast episode on this for quite a while. And it really is hands down one of my favorite stories in the whole entire Bible. And I'm going to give you my favorite reasons why. And I also feel like I should give a little bit of a disclaimer. Like I'm not a biblical expert. I grew up in very much of a faith-based household. I am very much faith-based myself. I went to a very small private Christian school growing up through high school. And uh, definitely one of the biggest differences in all of my coaching programs is I talk very openly about faith and co-creation, which is you and God working together, you and the universe finding a way to help you because I like, I don't know why anybody want to just do life on their own <laughs> without the power of unlimited love, unlimited possibility, unlimited answers, unlimited solutions. I, I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. So are we ready for this? Let's go right in. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So there goes my notes. Hold on. And we're back. I know this is, I'm see how excited I am. I'm tossing things around. I'm so excited. Okay. So let's start with my, these are my seven reasons why I love this story so much. So reason number one, and this is no particular order. We're just going to read from the story of David and Goliath. Number one is no one believed in David. Okay. Like I love that part of this story. His dad didn't believe in him. His brothers didn't believe in him. The army, the Israelite army didn't believe in him. The king didn't believe in him. Literally nobody believed in David. And I love this so much because do you know how many 
badass entrepreneurs have come to me and said, I don't understand why my husband or my wife doesn't believe in me. I don't understand why my significant other doesn't believe in me. I don't understand why my family doesn't believe in me. I don't understand why my mom and my dad doesn't believe in me. I don't understand why my team doesn't believe in me. I don't understand why blah, 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 doesn't believe me. And it's like, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I love you so much. It doesn't matter if nobody believes in you. It doesn't matter. 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 Because the only person that has to believe in you is you. All right. And I will say this. Once you start believing in yourself, everybody else is going to start believing in you too. Just watch and see how that happens. Once you start believing in yourself, everybody else is going to start believing in you too. It's like, it really is, I'm going to say it's like magic, but what you believe about yourself is what you project out to the world and what people are going to start reflecting back to you. So that's number one. Can I just say this again? Nobody believed in David except for him. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, think about it. And like this also, by the way, this isn't what watching a business this was a life or death situation. Okay. So Goliath and the Philistines were going to base, like kill, like fight, like plunder, raid, like all horrible things like you would see on Game of Thrones to, you know, the Israelites. So this wasn't like... I don't believe you can be a writer. I don't believe that you can have a travel business. This was like, I don't believe that. I believe you're going to die. <laughs> All right. Well, that's my first favorite thing. My, sever my second favorite thing was that he was the complete underdog. And I love this so much. And this is why we love underdog stories is because we... I mean, who doesn't love an underdog story? Everybody, everybody loves underdog story. I just knocked this thing down again. You all, if you're watching this the first time, you'd be like, Brandon is cray cray. Well, yes, I am. And I love what I do. So uh, he was the underdog. He was, first of all, I don't remember how old he is in the story. If you are a biblical expert, maybe you could actually answer that question for me in the comments on YouTube. I don't remember how old he was, but just think teenager, young adult, like he was the underdog. Like he was, the, I think it says that he was like small of stature or something like that in the Bible. Like he was the underdog. Okay. So I say this and the reason why this is a little bit different than no one believed in him is that if you're the underdog, that gives you power, right? If you are the underdog, that gives you so much power because you really don't have any expectations to live up to. <laughs> like, that's a good thing, right? Like, I know that sometimes we're like, no, like, I want everybody to believe in me and I want everybody to know I'm capable and able to do it. But sometimes being the underdog is amazing because no, ma like, no matter how good you do, you're going to blow their mind because you're the underdog. Like, you can't, you can't go wrong when you're the underdog. Like, you can't. So that's lesson number two. Lesson number three was, oh, I love this. Okay, so other thing that I love about David is he didn't use the normal tools that everybody else would have used in battle. And this is something that a lot of people miss. Everybody, a lot of people who grew up in the church or grew up faith-based, and maybe you're not anymore, you know, everybody knows the story of David and Goliath, that it was a slingshot, it was a stone that killed Goliath. But they miss the fact how that actually applies to modern day business, which is David used something that nobody else would have used that didn't make any sense. Nobody else would have thought it was possible to use a slingshot and stone. In fact, everybody thought he was crazy. And he even put on the armor, right? He even started to do what everybody else is telling him to do, which, by the way, if you didn't listen to my last week's podcast episode, which was seven reasons your mindset isn't positively impacting your business, 
One of the reasons I said is because you're doing things that other people tell you to do, but it's not the right time for you, not the right way for you, not the right investment for you. And so a case in point with David, okay, everyone else is like, you need to have a sword. You need to have an armor. You're going to go fight Goliath. And David like puts it on and is like, yeah, no, this is not me. I'm, I'm a shepherd boy. And this is, this is not me. And so like, he takes it all off and like drops his sword. It's like, this would be, I think this would be the equivalent of a lot of things. It'd be the equivalent of a business owner saying, you know what? I'm not going to do TikTok. It's not for me. Or I'm not going to run Facebook ads. It's not for me. Or someone who maybe is in the travel industry and they decide to have an actual brick and mortar store when everybody's saying not to do it anymore. Like you really have to trust in your heart. What is the right decision for you and your business? And that's a huge lesson learned in the story of David and Goliath that a lot of people miss is where David is just like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm going to use what I know, which is a slingshot and a stone. It's, it's what I'm going to use and it's what I know. And I, I just can't say how much I love that. So if you're doing something in your business and you're questioning, well, it doesn't make sense. Nobody else says it this way. Good for you, boo. Go and do it anyway. Go and do what your heart is leading you to do. I promise it's going to work out for you. If you, it's truly your heart leading in the right way, it's going to work out beautifully and you should not second guess yourself. Uh, so don't be afraid. And this is also, again, why I say don't do something just because other people tell you to do it. David didn't. Worked out really good for him. But he knew, he trusted his heart. Uh, number four, what I love about David is his attitude, his attitude. Do you know how many times I was, how many times people who are faith-based are like, now be careful, don't be too prideful. Pride cometh before the fall. Don't like, don't brag about what you're gonna do or like showboat or showcase it david literally tells the goliath that i'm going to cut your head off and the birds are gonna eat your flesh today okay that is that is like some game of thrones that is some house of dragon stuff right there okay like that is like ripe like HBO quality dialogue material that you can see. Okay. Like we just said that, like, why are we timid about our faith? Why are we timid about, we set out what we're going to do with God. It's because we don't have the faith that David had. I mean, you gotta have some serious mad dog faith to go up to somebody who is way bigger than you, way stronger than you, lives by the sword, and you're a shepherd boy, and like you're gonna say that to him? Because let's be honest, like that does not help a situation, <laughs> right? Like that's not gonna help your situation if you're facing Goliath and you're like. I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed it to the birds. So I would say like David's attitude, right? We do not have David attitude in our business. I don't care what you say about my offer. I don't care what you say about my business. I don't care what you think or how you feel, what you believe about me. We are going to scale this business. I'm going to serve. I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to glorify the gifts he's given me. And we're just going to take it to a whole new level. That's how everybody needs to have David-like attitude in your life and in your business, for sure. I mean, I just can't get enough of that attitude. And he says this after he takes off the armor. <laughs> so cool. All right. Uh, number five. He had no idea that God had been preparing him for this for his entire life. His entire life, he had been in preparation for this. I think that is absolutely fascinating. And I just want all of you just to pause this really quickly. And I want you to ask yourself one question. What are some of the things I've gone through and achieved in my life 
that could prepare me for something I had no idea in the future. I'll give an example. My husband is vice president in community relations, and he was a circus clown with me. It's how we met. And I can't even count how many radio interviews, television interviews, publicity things we did over the six, seven years we were both on the road with Filming Brothers Circus. And he and I never could have imagined how God would use that time period on the circus to prepare us and help us with our future careers. Me, being next level mindset expert, confidence coach, doing a podcast, having a YouTube channel, and him going out in the community and speaking on the behalf of hospitality organizations to help them build bridges of positivity in the communities that they serve. No, not, neither one of us could have imagined that. And if you think about David, he used the stone and the slingshot because that was how he defended the sheep. That was how he was as a shepherd. He had killed lions before and everything else. And I think the other thing I want to say is that, you know, we've all slayed lions in our lives before. We've all slayed dragons in our lives before. And all the lions we've slayed, all the dragons we've slayed at the time, some of those were really scary but they were all in preparation for something even more amazing, something bigger, something more incredible. And I just think that's so awesome. So, and David had no idea. David had absolutely no idea. I actually had a one-on-one -on -one coaching client who, oh, bless her heart, amazing, amazing individual. She is a nurse. She was growing and building her travel business. And she really wanted to become the preferred travel agency for the nursing union she was a member of. And three or four years prior to her even launching her travel business, there was a union dispute over pay for nurses. And very few nurses would actually speak up on behalf of all the nurses. And there was like maybe I didn't remember the story. There was like three, four, maybe five tops people who had agreed to speak, but they all eventually backed down except for her. She was the only one that spoke. And so fast forward three or four years later, and she wants to grow this travel business and she reaches out to the union. And the reason they said yes to allow her to present was because they remembered her from three or four years prior and her being the only one that stood up for the nurses union. That is, that is the amazing stuff that I'm talking about that God will do that you have no idea how the things that are happening in your life right now will be harvested for good years and years and years down the line in really amazing and beautiful and positive ways. So that's number five. Number six is that he encouraged himself. And I believe the actual verse says he encouraged himself in God and or the Lord. And I love this because it is so true. I am so human, boo. And I'm right there with you. Sometimes I just need like people to encourage me. And I'm sure we all need this. I mean, my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, they love it so much because I am there to encourage them. And the definition of encourage means literally to give someone courage, to give someone the strength to overcome fear, to give someone the strength to overcome a challenge or obstacle that they're facing. And it's very easy for us because we all have our own doubts, our own limitations on ourselves. It's very easy for us to... Uh, feel like we need other people to give us the courage to give, we need other people to give us the strength that we need, you know, we can't do it on our own. And first of all, you're never on, on your own. You know, I love teaching about co-creation. It's always you and God doing the thing you and the divine always. But in terms of like, we feel like we need other people to get us, understand us, to help us. And, and I believe with everything in my being, there are always people that God will use 
to help you no matter where you are in your life, in your business, angels and encouragers that you do need. But I do feel like this is really, really important for us not to glance over because there are times in our life where the only person that's going to give you the courage is yourself. And it's you and God and that's it. And that's okay. And knowing and being able to encourage yourself and not be dependent upon other people is going to be a huge win for you long-term, long run, a huge, 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 huge win for you long-term. So that's number six. David encouraged himself. Didn't need anybody else. And they encourage himself and who God created him to be, which is confidence. All right. And number seven. Oh, this is probably one of the juiciest pieces people miss out of this story. One of the juiciest pieces that people miss in this story. Number seven. After David kills Goliath. He takes the Goliath's armor as like trophies and puts them in his tent. A lot of people miss this. The reason why he did this is because he didn't want to forget how God showed up in his life. He didn't want to forget how God helped him overcome. He didn't want to forget how when no one else believed in him, he was safe to believe in who God created him to be and was able to set out and do it. That God helped him slay that giant. And if God helped him slay that giant, God could help him slay any giants. This is why one of the exercises that I often have my clients do, and I encourage all of you today is ask yourself, what have the giants I what giants have I slayed in my past? What giants has God helped me slay in my past and overcome? And how did God show up in those? And what is the armor I can store? I even have a I have a journal called the wind journal or something like that, where I, I keep a list of all my wins and all the things that I've done. And I just really want to encourage you all to do this because when you when you celebrate your wins, when you have trophies, you have those reminders of how God has showed up for your life, it just inspires you to keep going and persist and to not give up no matter what it looks like because faith is when it looks like it doesn't ha- it's not going to happen. And when you have trophies, when you have stored memories of the good that God has done in your life and the way that he's helped you overcome and all those kind of things, It just helps you go so much further. (sighs) I knew this was going to be super, super fun today. If you are not already, make sure you're following me on Instagram, at Brandon R. Foster. Follow me on YouTube, at Brandon R. Foster Coaching, all the places. And be sure you join the badass community of badass agency owners, founders, and coaches and the Confident AF Facebook group. I love you so much, boo. I'm super proud of you. Thank you for listening. Share this with other people who need encouragement, and I will see you again next week. Talk to you soon. You have been listening to Confident AF Live, taking your mindset next level to get next year's results today with host Brandon Foster on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Listen or watch live every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, where I help badasses like you with big dreams learn to take their impact and results next level, turning those unrealistic goals into reality. Confident AF Live is the gateway to enormous new opportunities and unlimited possibilities. For more information, get in touch with me, Brandon, at brandonrfoster.com.